I'm Darnell Carter, the family man. Who are you? Seems to be such a simple question, but so difficult to answer. Who are you? And I thought that if God created me in his image, that would be the best place to start. God created us all perfectly, just not perfect. Which means that God gave us all a spirit, a mind, and a body. Your spirit, you have a spirit of love, which means to give with no expectation. Your mind being that it's always right. Your body, which is in the direct, direct opposition to your spirit, because if the spirit is, is love, then the body is lust. If the spirit is giving, then the body is to receive. Now, what is the purpose of all of this? What I thought the purpose of, of even my existence was God created us all to be happy, to spread joy, to be who you are. Which means when your spirit, your mind, and your body are acting together, you're being true to yourself and your purpose as God has planned. However, man, in wanting to be God himself, wanting to control man, felt a need to break down man's spirit, a need to even label man. Think about this, when you come into the world you're born a who until man makes you a what. If you ask anyone who they are, they would start by telling you what they are. For instance, I'm a man. I'm a child of God. I'm a mother. I'm a father. I'm a black man. All of those things have labels attached to them. And we know that when things are labeled, labels come with an expectation of perfection. I'll give you an example. If you were to go to the grocery store, and you would go and you were looking to buy a can of corn. You would actually look for the label that says corn, simple enough. If you were to open up that can and peas were to be inside, you'd be disappointed because it wouldn't be what you expected. It would just be what was inside. So what happens is, is most of us, we operate off of our label as opposed to what's inside. Again, being born I was a who until someone labeled me a boy, which means I had to act like a boy and not be what's inside. In other words, if I was someone who would cry a lot, someone would tell me, boys don't cry. So I had to stop crying because that's not what boys did, which got me further away from who I am. Then I played sports. And I played sports because I love sports with the spirit of the sport until someone said I was pretty good. Then I stopped playing for myself and started playing for the people and their expectations. I didn't know if I performed well until someone decided if I did or didn't. Look at what that did to my spirit. So what happens is, is when you start thinking about who you are, do we really know who we are? Or are we here meeting the expectations, not of God, but of people. And I think it started with the people who said, because how many races of people did God create? Most people say hundreds, thousands even. And I would beg to differ, and I would say only one, human. God created humans. Man made the others, but God created human with the sole purpose of being happy so that they can spread joy. Now, when I think about that, if there is a race and our pursuit is of happiness, then what is a racist? Now, most people think it was, you know, Caucasian and so forth and so on. But no, a racist is someone who has not found happiness within themselves and try and prevent you on your journey as well. That is a racist to me. Someone who will not allow you to run your own race. So then I thought, well, who's been a racist 
in our lives. The people who said they love you but didn't care about who you were. Those have been the biggest racists in your life. I go back to the movie Roots and I see how when Kunta Kinte, he was a proud Mandinka warrior and he knew who he was until someone took the whip out and they beat him. But in watching that movie, I thought that it would be the Caucasian man who would beat him. But it wasn't. It was someone who looked just like him who took that whip. And as they whipped him, they said, you're a slave, you're a nigger, and your name is Toby. And as they beat him, he said, I'm Kunta Kente. And they hit him again and it broke down his spirit, which affected his mind. And we all know that your mind control your body. They hit him again, he said, Kunta. And then they beat him again. And there was silence because his mind had to determine the sacrifice that had to be made. He could sacrifice his body to allow his spirit to live. Or he could sacrifice his spirit and allow his body to live. He was stricken again. He was struck again and he said, I'm Toby which broke his spirit all the way down to his lowest form. They beat all of God out of him, all of his purpose out of him, and now he had to turn outside of himself for happiness. With a low spirit, he had to turn outside of himself, as I call it, to get high. I think the first thing that, when our spirit's been taken from us, the first thing that we turn to our people. We turn to people for our happiness. How do you know? If someone can provoke you to anger, if someone can get you angry, that means they also could have done something to make you happy. Think about that. Think about every single time someone angers you, if they'd have done something different, you'd be happy. That's a lot of power for someone to have. Imagine people turning towards money, thinking if I had more money, I'd be happy. I remember my grandmother and how she told me the difference between being broke and poor was the difference between pots and pans. See, if you cook a steak in a pan, all you have is that steak, and when you run out, that's it. It's over. That's being broke. It's no more. But a pan, a, a pot, excuse me, a pot, when you cook in a pot, you'll always have enough of what you need. Maybe not what you want. It may not be a steak in that pot, but it'll be what you need. See, poor people, when we were poor, we were happy because we, we had what we needed, we just didn't have what we wanted. So funny that even if I invited people over, all she would do was add water to the pot. See, now when, when you look at money, people whose spirit is attached to money, their spirit is broken when they don't have any. But poor people whose spirit is not attached to it, Seem like they always have enough love. They're happy. They spread joy. That same grandmother, I remember having a 19-inch television, black and white. Happy. I remember we wanted to get her a microwave. And she says, baby, grandma don't need no microwave, baby. And we said, but we want to get you a microwave. And she's 95. And she's, no, baby, grandma don't need no microwave. And we, we tried to convince her. And she says, baby, microwaves, I heard they cause cancer, baby. And I remember her fighting us tooth and nail because she would rather sit there and pop popcorn on that stove and take 20 minutes as opposed to two minutes in a microwave. But she was happy. 
I remember when she passed and the money that they found in the home. And how all the people whose spirit was attached to that money. And how they fought and argued over who would get it. Too bad they forgot about her spirit. And the joy that she brought our family just being happy with what she had. I think the other things that we turn to for our happiness outside of us when that God has been beaten out of us are drugs, alcohol. So bad that one thing I know, I hear people saying I'm an addict and I'm an alcoholic and I'm a firm believer that God did not create an addict or an alcoholic. That's man-made. God didn't create you to be an addict. God didn't create you to be an alcoholic. That's man-made. Your spirit was broken long before the label. I think about when we look at the things that we turn to, and I was talking to someone the other day about humility and patience. Humility is the appreciation of now. Patience is the acceptance of it. You have birth and you have death, and in the middle of that is now. Why would I want to rush now to hurry up and leave here because somehow I got so caught up into that word better that things will be better because I can't accept things the way they are. I don't believe in the word better. I don't think that anything's better. I think that it's just different. Things will be different. doesn't make it better. Money won't make your life better. It'll just make your life different. People don't make your life better. They just make your life different. As I look at who I am and the purpose of who I am, my spiritual being, I now have to turn back and become what God has created me to be. And that's happy so that I can spread joy. No longer do I waste the most precious things I have, wasting my time doing things that don't cause that for me. So funny that I, I look at it as an analogy of a shoe. I ask people, what size do you wear? And they give me the number size and I say, no, that's not your size. Oh, yes, it is. That's the size. But one thing I learned is that one size don't fit all. The size that fits you is your size. And then I start thinking about as I grow, then that size even changes. When I think about as I've changed and I've grown and, and, and accepted of who I am, I no longer have to be pleasing to man, only pleasing to God. Because I am not going to build my mansions here when I can't take anything with me. I understand what it means now to be blessed. And being blessed is mean, to me means to be able. And I look at all the things that I'm able to do. God says he's gave me everything I need to be happy. So I have the ability to be happy so I'm able. So God says because I know you're able, then that means you're capable. And if you're capable, then that means you're responsible. And God says if you're able and capable and responsible, God's going to hold you accountable. For your happiness. I want to leave you with this. I think it was William Shakespeare that said it best. To thy own self be true. If they can't die for you, then why live for them? Live for the one that died for you. This is Darnell Carter. I'm the family man. I hope that words that I've shared with you today have inspired you to change. Thank you.